Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Julie Show. And you know what? Today is January 4th, 2021. It marks one month since the Julie and Milo Show coming to you from my home in Newport and from Milo in Nashville, Tennessee. Milo, please say hello. How are you guys doing today? Thank you, Milo. Yes, we've been around for one month mark today and we have 25 videos coming to you. And every single time when we get together, we talk about on passive. We're talking about connecting people from all over the world. We have people from the UK, from India. We'll be having people from Asia, from F Africa. We have people from everywhere. And yes, on passive is a place for many of us connecting together from all over the world. And it all started with, with Mr. Ash Mufarad. And today we have a community uh, that has been with on passive for over two years and we've always make uh the julie and milo show a special a special place for many of us founders getting together getting to know people so today we have a special founder here with us and i would like to have milo share and introduce our guest today milo well thank you julie i can't believe it's been only a month it seems longer than that that we've been doing this show but uh, what incredible people we've met and no different today uh, even though sometimes people think their story might not be that interesting or they might not be that interesting everybody's got a story and this one i'm so excited to bring it to you and i am for you to hear the story to kevin rutledge kevin come on out there he is Welcome to the show, Kevin. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, man, we just we we couldn't wait to get you on the show. We're excited about what we're going to hear today on the show from you and, and to hear your story. So let's just start. Uh, I know you're from uh, Bloomington, uh, Illinois, and, and uh, you did something that was sort of in my vein of work. I, I sold lumber to contractors and stuff. Uh, you know, that was my uh, occupation. Uh, I mean, I had a lot of them, but that, that was the last, I guess. And, and I understand you were a builder. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, I've, I've done a lot of things too. Um, I started off, you know, um, washing dishes, believe it or not, I was 14. But, uh, but, you know, as you get older, you know, I was probably you know, uh, just out of high school and, and, uh, and I started building houses. Uh, with a couple of buddies I went to high school with and then my brother he was a union carpenter at the time he was working in a shop and uh, but he says man if you want to be a carpenter he says you got to go out and you know get in the hall and become a, you know become a union carpenter I was like all right you know so well I hurt my back when I was still building houses so I went through my first back surgery and then when I recovered out of that, then I decided I'd go through the apprenticeship. And so I went through the four-year apprenticeship, became a journeyman carpenter, and that's how I spent most of my life. Wow. Look at my living. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. There are interesting things that you have done in life. Tell us some of that interesting things. I know that you've been uh, working in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Tell us that. Well, that was the coolest job I ever had. You know, I like war movies, you know, and uh, one of my favorite movies is uh, uh, Fury, you know, about Tank Squad. But I was, uh, I was super privileged. I wanted to be a CB. I don't know if you know what that is, but they were more, you know, more suited probably for what I ended up doing, you know, as carpentry and that is they're, they're the guys that do the operators and whatever, heavy equipment operators that, you know, go in and build the runways and the bases and that sort of thing. And and that's really what I wanted to do. But um, my recruiter, I think he used to be a used car salesman, and he talked me into going to aviation. So that sounded pretty cool to a young guy, you know, working on airplanes and stuff, you know. So I went ahead and, and signed up and did that. And, uh, and I went down to Tennessee um, for school after basic. Did my basic out in San Diego, Mir or, uh, San Diego. And then I went to Mir uh, Memphis. Memphis, Millington, to uh, go to school. I call it A school, and um, 
Then I ended up back in San Diego at Miramar, it was my base. And um, so I was a 14 um, fighter squadron. We have 24 fighting renegades and um, best job I ever had. Hmm. Being out in the middle of the Indian Ocean in the middle of the night, and you can't see anything. In the, the daytime, all you can see is water. And it's pitch black. All you got is the lights off the boat. You're shooting planes off one end. You're catching them on the other. I mean, you know, you're 20 years old. You feel like you're floating. You know, it's just, wow. it's crazy. It's 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 most crazy experience I've ever experienced in my whole life. And but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Wow, that's a, that's a, <laughs> awesome. I, I imagine there's some scary mo moments out there in the dark and stuff but uh well, you know it's something you want to pay attention to <laughs> <laughs> so uh so kevin uh we all have things that happen to us in life and and your story is so incredible when you were telling us it was so heartfelt uh i want you to uh if you don't mind just tell tell that story like you were telling us before, you start wherever you want to, and you just take as much time as you need to tell this story, because I think it's something that needs to be heard, and uh, it, it's a great story. Okay. Um, well, thanks. Um, well, um, where to start? Mm, this thing uh, it gets pretty convoluted, but uh, no, I guess. Um, you know, we all have a why, you know, that's, that's a good place to start. And uh, I was always, I always had a trouble um, kind of identifying my why at first. I got into this business for the wrong reasons. I wasn't really in the best, uh, didn't have the best attitude at first. And um, it's probably why it took as long as it did to get, you know, see any kind of real success. But, but no, I had to think about my why and, um, when my wife and I uh, met, she already had a daughter. I was I wasn't the father, but um, that little girl was was born perfect, and she inquired of infection. Um, we lost her at three years old, and uh, the infection led to uh, her having encephalitis, and her ended up severely brain damaged, and we lost her. You know, at three years old, like I said. And it devastated my wife. My wife, uh, she was devoted to that child 24-7 every day, you know, of that child's life. And when we lost her, um, she sat at a kitchen table for a year. And uh, I would go to work, and I'd come home, and she'd still be there. And um, it was a horrible thing to, uh, to witness, you know, a, a human being go through. And... Um, but along with that came, you know, this lawsuit, this malpractice suit. So there was talk of, you know, enormous sums of money. And we're just a couple of Midwestern kids, man. We don't, you know, we never went without, we, kind of, we grew up with the important things, you know what I mean? The things that money can't buy. And, uh, but we don't really know what, uh, you know, living that way was like okay so we're talking you know what are we going to do you know what you know we don't need uh, anything like that so after we had our needs met what would we do and um so caught the talk you know got along to uh you know like foundations and stuff like that and, and a certain you know funds or whatever, you know, for, you know, kids that, uh, that need help. We knew it was going to, you know, it was going to be about kids. And, um, and we knew that it was going to have her name tied to it. And uh, that was pretty much all we'd figured out. But, you know, life happens and, and things don't always turn out like they're supposed to. And, and uh, you know, sometimes lawyers talk and and doctors make deals and whatever. And so that didn't pan out um, for whatever reason. And uh, 
so we go on through our lives, you know, and I become a carpenter and, and we, uh, you know, we do, we have, we do life, you know, we raise a couple of kids and, uh, and uh, everything's fine. And, and I had a, you know, I had another hurdle I had to get over. I had, uh, um, had a problem with alcohol when I was younger and, um, I let it back into my life. I started dabbling with it a little bit and it ruined my marriage. And, uh, and so I ended up, you know, separated from my wife and kids. And, uh, I was, and that's the state I was in when, when I lost her, I lost her at, uh, in 2009. And, it changed my world, my already changed world, it changed it again. I um, felt like I've been living in a twilight zone. And, uh, but it was, I was different. You know, it was 12 years uh, sober and I was able to be a father to my kids. And I was able to get through all that without a drink. And uh, I was real fortunate for that. But I got into marketing to make a bunch of money so I could, because I was mad at the world and I just wanted to check out and I just wanted to make a bunch of money and go do my thing. And through recovery, through loss, through experience, through great leadership, finally getting to a point where I could follow directions. I started doing some things that uh, turned my life around and uh, led me to this path. And two years ago, I got involved with Auto Passive because of my sponsor in network marketing. I work with a guy named Alan Cousins, who I can't say enough good things about. And uh, Alan does it right. And he does it the way I want to do it. He does it ethically, he does it honestly. He's a no bones kind of guy who tells you straight out what you need to do. And I'll tell you straight out, the only reason I haven't been successful to this point is attitude, is largely attitude and work. I'm lazy and I'll be the first one to tell you. And the reason I'm here is because Alan sent me an email that said that this thing was fully automated and I wouldn't have to lift a finger. And I said, sign me up. Sounds like it's perfect for me. And I was in the wrong, you know, I was in the wrong space. I'd been beat up, spit out, you know, chewed up, spit out. It was about done with the whole thing. About fed up with the whole making money online thing, you know. I'll just go out and get a part-time job. You know, I'll make 1200 1500 bucks a month and I'll limp my way into retirement fully because I'm still not fully retired meaning I'm not collecting benefits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a carpenter. I'll never be retired. I got a tree out in my backyard. Yeah. I'm going to pick my power out. There's, I own a home. You know, there's, there are no days off. <laughs> but I'm loving every minute of it. Uh, but no, I, uh, I mean, I got into on passive to, uh, you know, for all the wrong reasons. But I'm here because of leadership. And I stay here because of leadership. And and this is a godsend for me. It, it really is a godsend. But uh, did that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Milo, did you want to ask? Uh, no, go ahead, Julie. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, Kevin. What a, what a story. And um, wow, I, I just don't know what to say. That uh, thank you for sharing that story with us, and um, yeah, that makes that makes this show real because we have real people that have real story, and we sharing that with people, and wow, it's incredible. I'm trying to get my my mind um, around to get back on the show, but you know, <laughs> something happened at uh, something happened at your place today. There's a the tree branch that fell off. Yeah, we had an ice storm <laughs> um, night before. And um, I lost a pretty good sized branch, and and at first it got hung up, and so it was it was on the main coming in, 
and it tore off the, uh, you know, the, the, I don't even know what you call that thing, but uh, there's a wire that goes down to the roof that takes the tension off the line. Well, it tore that right off, right off the roof. So now the line is under tension. And that's a weather head is what they call that, where it goes in your house. Mm-hmm. Kind of looks like that thing. The wire in. So the tension now is just, you know, it's just pulling on. It's a little bit, it's still a mile away, so I'm just waiting for the power to get ripped up. <laughs> oh. another branch, if another branch comes down and hits it, it probably will go. But, um, <laughs> Well, hopefully it won't do it during our show, right? <laughs> well, we can, I think we'll be okay with battery power for a while. There you go. All right. Well, <laughs> Kevin, your your story is just incredible. And so many of us have been through things not quite like that. You know, uh, there were some tragic things that happened there to you. And it's so good to see that, you know, you come back around or whatever. But uh, I can only imagine... <clears throat> Uh, one thing I like to say about home passive is, you know, when we first get in, sometimes we get in that we're going to make money. We're going to make this money. But I think as we get in and we start listening to Ash's heart, to the passion and to the other passion and heart of other people within home passive, I do feel that home passive is going to change the world one person at a time, you know, starting with Ash McFarland, and it's going to change all humanity. And I like to say, you know, that when we first get in, we're thinking about the money that we're going to make and stuff. And then that all goes away because we know it's going to happen. You know, we can see the writing on the wall, but but then there's that other aspect of how are we going to be able, how much money are we going to be able to take and give back? And I feel like that, you know, that's something that you're looking at. You're looking at. Tell us about that. Yeah, I was just kind of, I made some notes here because you know how I am, I ramble. But uh, what I wrote down here is on passive allows me to be who I am without sacrificing my values. Now I've been in businesses before where I didn't exactly have to sacrifice my values, but I didn't have something that I believed in like I do here, okay? And it's not just our products or our company, it's our people. It's the whole, it's the whole thing. Okay. I get an honest, honest, ethical way to do business online from the comfort of my home or anywhere I can get a signal. And I get a real ability to make real change for real people. I like to say we're in the smile business or the hope business, Yeah. you know, because um, I know, I don't think I know, you know what the difference is? I mean, I know. Right. I know I can put this, I have to be careful who I put this in front of. Right. There was a time in my life where you would have dropped a, something, this this offer in my life, it would have been the worst thing for me. You know, so there's people like that out there. But yeah, I mean, I, I and that's out of my pay grade. I leave that, you know, up to a higher power to figure out who needs to hear this and who doesn't. But um no, like I said before, I'm here because of leadership. The potential that we have is unbelievable. Um, I believe that um, I believe in Ash. Period. I've never seen anybody like him. And I'll tell you what, um, it's amazing how we all got here because those first two videos were horrible. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. If I made them, I would say the same thing. But I'm not a public speaker either. Okay. But you know what? There's something to that. See, there's something to that. Because, you know, like I don't do, you know, I'm not a public speaker. I'm not, you know, this or that or whatever. And, and nobody is. Nobody here is. But we're all just being ourselves. We're all just doing our thing. And look what's happening. Mm-hmm. Look what's happening. Hey, it's okay for Milo to be himself. Hey, it's okay for Julie to be herself. Hey, maybe I can be myself. Maybe there's something locked inside of me that, you know, I can offer to the world. Absolutely. You know, that's what's happening. It's so cool. It's so cool to be a part of. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in your eyes, how, what do you see on passive in the next five years? Oh boy. 
I can't figure out the next five weeks. <laughs> 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 but given, uh, given I can only ma- I can only imagine. I'm gonna take it. Well, I'm a one day at a guy, one day at a time guy. That's where I'm supposed to stay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we've seen the writing on the wall. I mean, holy cow, five years. Unimaginable, isn't it? I can only look back, you know, at the last two years what we've done. And what we've done in two years, we I mean, technology-wise, it, it should have taken five years, I believe. Right. And and so that's what, you know, if you want to know, if you want to, you know, see the future, look at the history. And uh, I can't believe, I don't know where we're going to be in five weeks. It's going to be impressive. I can't wait. In five years? That's way out of my pay grade. Absolutely. <laughs> I think out, out of everyone, you know, we, we have no idea where this thing is going, but we do know it's massive, you know, and we do, we can look and we can see what's happening in the world today. All we got to do is look and see what's happening in the world. And this answers a lot of the, a lot of the problems we have right now. You know, you take Academy. How is that going to work out with the schools, you know, and stuff like that? You got that uh, going, you know, and just the different, uh, I think of in Nashville, the music industry, you know, the music oh, industry yeah. is hurting right now. But when you talk about Old Connect and you can put, you can put an artist in front of a million people with a live show or, or how about a TV show or something where, you know, people make movies and they can put it in front of a million people without going to the movie theater. You know what I'm saying? And and all of a sudden you put it on the screen. It's it's like some of this stuff just blows my mind where where it can go, you know, with the thing. So uh, it, it's just awesome. But I know we're coming out, we're kind of running out of time here, but uh, Kevin, I want to thank you, man, because your story resonated so much with me and, you know, what, what you've gone through, how, you, how you're looking forward smiling there's nothing better than seeing a smile and seeing hope with people you know i believe that is something that uh, everyone we can offer everybody hope we can offer them a smile you know and it doesn't cost us anything you know so uh anyway i appreciate you coming on the show your story was awesome well thank you sir this this was a blast i had a blast i'm glad uh, glad you guys asked me uh, it's a real honor being here, real honor being in passive and um, being a founder. I tell you, it's just uh, it's unbelievable. Um, one other thing I wanted to say was about an attitude of our company. Uh, we got a no one left behind attitude, and we are the correction to the corruption, as Ash said. I love that. And uh, when you were talking about the music industry, my uh, boy that's a drummer and that's a whole other story in itself but uh, now what about self-promotion how many people how many people do we need to hear from good musicians that can't get a break because absolutely because a producer or promoter or somebody doesn't want to give it to them that's huge yeah yeah Yeah, i to decide who's good Absolutely. I mean, and, and is, <laughs> well, the thing about it is, is, is what a lot of guys don't realize is you're talking now you you can advertise or you can play to 212 countries. There's all these little countries that are dying to hear good music and they don't, they might not have it, you know, well, now they can get it because you can, you can just do it online. I, I can see it changing the whole industry you know, uh, by selling uh, CDs, selling music across the world, you know, because now you got the old wallet also, which I like to say is uh, that is your world bank, you know, that exactly. you can collect money from any place, you know. So I think it's, I think the whole thing's going to change, change the music industry. I don't know if you've seen the uh, video that we did on, on uh, the Julie Milo show where we, we said, how is on passive going to help the music industry? And we go through a lot of that, you know, 
But, uh, uh, you know, it's just that sometimes you don't think outside the box. What can this actually do? Many things. There's so many things that it, when you expand your mind, it just, it, it's like you said, you can't even, you can't even think that big. No. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's the way how Ash is taking it. Every time he comes on, he's just expanding our, our mind and it's incredible. Any last words you want to share with our audience? I'll just, you know, piggyback on what you just said there about Ash. Um, yeah, and, and you know, like what, what just happened here with me and Milo. You know, Milo's talking about the music industry. He sparked something in me. Mm -hmm. And then I share that with Milo, and that sparked something in you. Mm -hmm. And that's how it all works, is this collaboration versus competition. Absolutely. See, we, we, got, we got bad data is what my sponsor likes to call it. And we've been sold the story that we can only do it one way. And that can't be further from the truth. That's true. You know, when we collaborate, there is nothing we can't do. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful ride. I'm having a blast. I've never had so much fun. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I've had a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> lots, lots of love. Yeah, lots, uh, lots of love in on passive. So um, thank you so much, Kevin, for being here with us um, and sharing your story. There you have it, everyone. Um, every time when we get together on the Julie and Milo show, we're connecting people. Uh, we spark some sparks in each other, you know, and, and we're, we're just expanding it. So thank you so much for turning into our show. Um, it's been one month since we've been here and uh, we're loving it and we hope that you love it too. And if you hear this message, please get back with the person who shared this with you. And if you are a on passive founder, please continue to plug in, continue to explore and continue to share. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'll, we see you next time. Take care. Good night from Nashville.